Hey, what's poppin' kings and queens? Hope all of you have been doing well. So, Legendary Pictures decided to stop blueballing us and have released uh, several trailers, way too many for my taste, regarding the upcoming Godzilla vs. Kong film. Many of you guys were asking me who I think will come out on top, so I decided to analyze both characters with information given to us in the movies, trailers, the comic books, and the novels to give an educated, composite analysis on which Titan has the overall better attributes, feats, and bite to slap the other into submission. By the way, if you guys want to see more future Godzilla content from me, then please be sure to subscribe as I will rank other Godzilla monsters like Mechagodzilla and the Bay Mothra down the line. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. Let's start with who I believe to be the underdog in this battle, that being King Kong himself, who so far has only appeared in the 2017 Skull Island film, and has received a lot of doubt due to his small stature from back then. But we do have to keep in mind that Kong was still a juvenile during the 1970s and clearly grew much, much bigger. Right off the bat, Kong has promise as he was born in battle to two of the last members of Kong's species, who were labeled as being the strongest of their kind and had a lot of combat experience as they had fought off against hordes of crafty and malicious skull crawlers pretty much every day. From experiencing the death of his parents, Kong was fueled by rage and instinct to survive, and from that moment on, he had to fight a bunch of monstrosities on Skull Island, like flora hybrid crocodiles called Siren Jaw, to gigantic hentai- I mean, gigantic squid, and of course, skull crawlers. Kong was so efficient with combat that he was able to weaken the skull crawler population so much that he forced him to remain underground for the most part Double until, kill. of course, humans came along and screwed everything up by dropping seismic charges. His biggest challenge during the film was none other than the Skull Devil, the alpha big dick skull crawler who is attributed to being the one that killed off Kong's family and likely had a lot of experience fighting his species, which certainly gave him an edge. But he was apparently not capable of killing Kong outright given his past battle scars and beef. Kong's stamina is pretty crazy, since even after being wounded from the napalm burns and gunfire, Kong was still able to fight the Skull Devil likely for several hours because when he faced off against Packard's unit, the moon was pretty high up in the sky and we saw Kong fight the crawler up until dawn. And as mentioned in the Skull Island novel and the prequel comic, Kong becomes fueled in combat from his pain and fury, which probably means that Kong is like a Sith apprentice or something. You never know. Using this pain as strength, even with the obvious edges in size and experience that the Skull Devil had, Kong was still able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against it until he got more exhausted and got trapped by old chains. Which is struggle to break, uh, that wouldn't work on Godzilla. And if it wasn't for the humans interfering at the very end, it is likely that the Alpha Skull Crawler would have killed him then and there. Kong is strong enough to crush big-ass spiders and send them <coughs> flying for miles, knock down the Alpha Skull Crawler with his punches, and send it flying somewhat with a big-ass monkey stick. And most impressively, while exhausted, he literally ripped out its innards, Mortal Kombat style. Fatality. Although Kong is very strong indeed, his durability isn't as high in comparison to other titans, such as the Mutos, since he not only got cut by grabbing helicopter blades, but bullets could draw blood and penetrate his skin, and when he got engulfed by a napalm trap, he screamed out in pain and received so much damage too quickly that he was temporarily knocked out. And it is implied that the seismic charges set in place would have been able to blast his body apart and kill him after he was defeated by none other than Mace Mother Windu. In comparison, the Mutos, who were also not fully grown, were capable of enduring pretty much whatever the US military threw at them, and were generally unaffected by the things that would have heavily damaged, if not killed, a juvenile Kong. Think about it, if many modern military squads got wiped out by the Mutos simply passing through and using their EMP capabilities, and Kong was subdued by what little remained of Sam Jackson's unit, it does bring something into perspective. Unfortunately for Kong, a troubling spot is certainly his body, or most notably his neck area, as he does not have any armor or plating protecting it, unless he makes some, and he clearly struggled in freeing himself from the Skullcrawler's bite, which already puts him in a really bad spot against Godzilla in regards to its own bite force, which we'll get into later. Being an ape, Kong on paper should have higher intelligence than the vast majority of the Titans, perhaps even Godzilla, since apes like gorillas and chimpanzees are pretty much the smartest animals in the animal kingdom. After us, of course. 
Then again, some people unironically believe that Saitama has a chance against Goku. So maybe we're not all that smart. Godzilla is obviously like in his own classification, but he does have amphibious and reptilian features. And these two animal groups are on average less intelligent than mammals going by the encephalization quotient. Which measures how small or large a species brain is compared to that of other species with a similar body size. Obviously there are other factors involved in determining intelligence and there are exceptions of course. But generally speaking, birds and mammals have a brain up to 10 times heavier and more complex than a reptile of similar body size. The reason I am bringing this up is because in relation to their body size, Kong has big head and Godzilla has small head. But it wouldn't be fair to limit Godzilla's intelligence based on relative classification alone. Because for example, both characters have showcased that they can recognize if a human is actively threatening them or helping them out. And other titans such as the Skullcrawlers and King Ghidorah are capable of malice, detecting traps, and killing for sport, which does signify a decent level of cognition. However, Kong does have more compassion and altruism as it is more conscious of bystanders, like when he saved a camera chick from drowning and when he rescued a giant water buffalo that was trapped underneath a helicopter wreck. Godzilla, although he is trying to help mankind in his own way, he doesn't really give a shit if there's like a, you know, city with people's houses in there or like a bridge. He'll just walk through it to kick some titan ass, he doesn't care. Then again, prior to this film of course, Kong has never fought in a concrete jungle environment with millions of innocents on the line, but I would imagine that he would be at least more careful than Godzilla. Dexterity is a worthwhile topic, that being the overall effectiveness of Kong's hands to climb, grasp objects, and craft weapons and tools, which does seem to be a very big narrative point in this movie. As I previously mentioned, Kong was able to trim off a tree trunk to bat the skull devil in the face, and like we saw in the trailer, he's able to craft a sophisticated axe, maybe even armor, capable of not only blocking an atomic breath, but absorbing it entirely. And I would imagine that it would be sharp enough to puncture Godzilla or Mechagodzilla's scales. Kong was crafty enough to trick veteran helicopter pilots into crashing into each other, and he also arced a propeller so cleanly that he could impale and drag the skull crawler towards him. But even if Godzilla was smart enough to craft a weapon, why would he need to when he literally has an atomic breath, a devastating bite, and really sharp claws? Look at it this way, if a Bombardier Beetle or an Electric Eel were somehow intelligent enough to think about the concept of weapon making, Lack of dexterity aside, there really wouldn't be a natural pressure for them to do so when they literally already have a weapon to begin with. So I don't think it is fair to say that, oh, Godzilla is dumb just because monkey can make big monkey stick. But overall, I would believe that Kong should be smarter, but we'll see. But going by the trailers, it doesn't seem like that's gonna help all that much because Godzilla with just a slap literally made Kong fall on his ass and lose his footing, while well, Kong's punch to Godzilla did not. And it seems that chains are a challenge for him to break, and I don't have to tell you this, but Godzilla would not be stopped by that. This would infer that Kong's physical strikes alone are not gonna be enough to KO Godzilla, much less kill him. But hey, give him some armor and a weapon and he should stand a much better chance. Now, let's move on to the big nuclear lizard, Godzilla. What does he bring to the table? Titanus Gojira is an apex predator that is over 250 million years old, as he has been around since the Permian period. And even in his younger and weaker days, he was able to withstand being in proximity to a mass extinction level meteor, which would logically be superior to any nuclear weapon we could ever throw at it. It is pretty obvious because the 1954 Castle Bravo test was not successful in wiping him out. Over time, he eventually became stronger due to feeding on the Earth's radiation and has a lot of combat experience due to partaking in an ancient wide-scale titan war and, well, due to being much, much older than Kong's entire species and mammals and dinosaurs and all of that stuff. Going by cave paintings and accounts by ancient groups of people that witnessed these crazy monster battles, Godzilla has fought other titans and King Ghidorah numerous times, to the point that mountains shook and entire forests were uprooted. 
Plus, at the end of King of the Monsters, we got a glimpse at another cave painting entailing that Godzilla, or a Godzilla relative at least, has fought Kong species before, which infers that he might have experience in dealing with big monkeys. Godzilla acts as a force of balance as he sought out to the young Mutos to cripple their attempts at global domination. In the process, the humans tried firing everything they had at Godzilla, from missiles, tank shells, Lego bricks, Nokia phones, and everything in between, but none of it did anything substantial. I would like to say that I was wrong in saying in my Godzilla ranking video that the Mutos weren't really a challenge to him, because they were indeed since they nearly killed him and stabbed him like multiple times. But I'd like to clear up that individually speaking, neither the male or the female Muto were able to overwhelm Godzilla on their own and had to tag team him like Vegeta and Goku did against Jiren to even stand a chance. In fact, the male Muto was overpowered and chased away twice by Godzilla, once in their Hawaii battle and another time right after he had given his queen the nuclear food for the babies. Godzilla's physical strength is next level, as he was not only able to push back the female Muto down several city blocks, but push it down, which is impressive given that the female Muto weighs about 60,000 metric tons, according to the New Century Special Effects movie guide. His jaw is so powerful that he threw the 15,000 ton male Muto across a block like a ragdoll, and his teeth were able to tear through his protective sheath, which jets and tanks were outright unable to penetrate. An exhausted Godzilla was capable of slamming the male Muto with enough force using his tail that it got impaled in a nearby building. And he even overwhelmed the female Muto who remained helpless as Godzilla blasted her mouth with a blue stream of atomic juice, ripping her head clean off. It is worth noting that he fought to both Mutos for at least over an hour, even while having multiple stab wounds. The Godzilla 2014 official movie novel does have some slight variations as to how the battle went down. But Godzilla was capable of swiping the female's head clean off with a single swipe of his arm. So what we're getting at here is that Kong has to avoid these really powerful strikes at any cost. After that battle, he did get his ass beat very badly by Muto Prime, also known as Jinshin Mushi in the Godzilla Aftershock comic, which is canon. But it doesn't really matter because it is not like Kong would do any better since Muto Prime defeated multiple Godzillas and might have been able to slap King Ghidorah as well, but I believe that fight is a bit more competitive. Regardless, to better gauge Godzilla, we need to look at how strong King Ghidorah is because Big G was at least comparable to him and fought him numerous times. This is where it gets really spicy, because King Ghidorah, just by casually flapping his wings, was able to create hurricane-level winds and spawn storms far larger than have ever been recorded in human history. In fact, his storms covered various parts of the world, and the energy that he was releasing spawned thousands of thunderstorms and other natural disasters, according to the novel and the movie. Yes, the other titans were helping out in terraforming the planet, but the majority of it was due to Ghidorah's life force and influence. Creating storms and other natural disasters don't directly scale to attack potency and durability in most cases. But since they were born as a result of Ghidorah's own movements and energy, which he uses to also fire his gravity beams, we can get an idea about how much more powerful his attacks are if they can harm Godzilla. To do this, we can use CAPE, Convective Available Potential Energy, which can be used to measure how much energy is needed for creating a thunderstorm or a tornado, and it quantifies the instability of the atmosphere at a given point in time. Simply put, if there is high enough potential energy in the atmosphere, the altitude or the overall height of the cloud increases, and with it, the more likely it can develop into a natural disaster and become more volatile. Cumulonimbus clouds, which are the tallest and thickest clouds, are seen in massive thunderstorms and have been recorded to being over 12,000 meters high. The biggest and meanest thunderstorms have cape values of over 8,000 joules per kilogram, and just the average hurricane, just the average, can release the energy of thousands of atomic bombs during its lifetime. Logically, Ghidorah's storm value would be far, far higher than this, but we'll go with a low ball to get a point across. At one point, Ghidorah's storm covered virtually all of Brazil, which has an area of about 8.5 million square kilometers. By cancelling units and multiplying this area by the 12,000 meter altitude and density of the clouds, and the aforementioned Cape value, we get a whopping amount of approximately 820 quintillion joules of energy that were required to create the storm and maintain it. Which is approximately 196 gigatons. 
By the way, this is still a low ball because this is not counting the kinetic energy that the wyvern would have also had to release in order to move the storm around as well. This is pretty casual for Ghidorah and his charged gravity beams would logically exert far more power than this, and Godzilla was able to endure them several times. And this is pretty consistent because he was right next to a f meteor impact. Even while at that's door, due to the Oxygen Destroyer, Godzilla was able to swim to his temple and survive a massive nuclear explosion right afterwards, making his durability overall more impressive than that of Kong's. Yeah, he obviously feeds off of nuclear radiation, but he still withstood the immense temperature and the explosive yield from the bomb. While Kong was getting burned by a napalm. <laughs> yeah, he's not gonna win, bro. Okay, I'm sorry. Within the novel and the movie, it is repeated multiple times that virtually all of the Titans had subjugated to Ghidorah's Alpha Call, and that their best shot in defeating him was not Kong, but Godzilla. Kong was strong enough to resist Ghidorah's call and was focused on not letting the Skullcrawlers escape Skull Island, but none of the main characters ever mentioned him in being a plausible candidate to take care of Ghidorah. Dr. Serizawa and Dr. Russell, who had literally studied kaijus for years, and I guess they're kind of Godzilla fanboys, both classified Godzilla and Ghidorah as being at the top of the Titan food chain, the apex predators with a unique rivalry that would ultimately decide the fate of the Earth. So even narratively speaking, Godzilla was better suited in defeating Ghidorah than Kong. Yes, Godzilla did require two amps to finally finish him off after King Ghidorah himself got amped by consuming energy from a power plant and feeding off of Rodan's volcanic radiation. But Ghidorah overall saw Godzilla as his biggest obstacle, rival, and enemy in enacting his mass extinction event. To further prove that Godzilla has a clear advantage in overall power, durability, and aggression, after he defeated Ghidorah, several Titans rolled up in attempts to get revenge for their fallen alpha. But Godzilla was having none of that and was ready to pull up on them then and there, and made them back and bow down to the king of the monsters. Now, I'm not saying that this exhausted Godzilla could have beaten all of the monsters at the end of the movie, but it is implied that he was ready to fight them and seemed dominant enough to them even in this weakened state that they were like, uh, f that, I'm not fighting him. So now that I have covered both characters, let's quickly go over what attributes one has over the other and we'll come to a conclusion. Regarding mobility and reach, Godzilla typically moves slower than Kong on land due to his overwhelming weight, but in short bursts, he's able to cover several city blocks fast enough to clash with Ghidorah and create a shockwave. But since Kong is able to climb and waste far less, he clearly has the advantage in those categories, especially when taking his reach into account due to his longer arms. Within a city setting, Kong has a potential high ground advantage because Godzilla, for example, struggled to get a hold of the male Muto who perched on top of a building. So Kong should be able to use these buildings as cover and as vantage points to get the jump on Godzilla and try to catch him off guard. In terms of water combat, it is pretty obvious that Godzilla has the clear advantage due to his aquatic adaptations. Without the aid of elevated platforms on land or a weapon that Kong would likely have trouble holding while swimming and fighting for his life at the same time, Godzilla could asphyxiate him or rip off his limbs like he did to King Ghidorah. In terms of experience, it is quite clear that Godzilla has fought far longer, but the thing is that it is not likely that he was fighting virtually every day to survive, as he could get away from his opposition due to the multiple territorial paths that he has in the oceanic tunnel system. Although Kong is far younger than Godzilla, he likely has more frequent combat experience because he is stuck on Skull Island and lives right next door to his natural predators and contemporaries. Yes, experience is an important factor, but not as great as people might think in this situation. Because look at it this way, the Mutos were pretty much only a few days old in their more mature state, yet off of instinct alone, they were still able to give the more experienced Godzilla a tough battle. Mothra, who was literally a day old in her adult stage, was still able to outmaneuver and stalemate Rodan, who is far older than she was. So even though Godzilla does have more experience, this doesn't mean that, you know, he'll automatically win solely off of that. Regarding Kong's own weight, I couldn't find uh, solid evidence regarding it, but multiple articles did go with a uh, over 150 ton figure when he was a juvenile. 
But even if Kong got like, say, 10 times heavier in his mature state, he still wouldn't be within Godzilla's weight class, who weighs like over 100,000 tons. Yeah, Kong did grow much larger, but there is no logical way that his skin and fur durability magically increased enough to being able to endure Godzilla's atomic breath without heavy injury, if not death. And this is pretty evident by him evading and blocking it within the trailer. So Kong's best bet to win is to basically get the hell away from Godzilla, try to block his atomic breath with his axe or, you know, dodge it, somehow stab him multiple times, and try to have a high ground advantage at all times. Whereas for Godzilla, if he gets close to Kong, he can likely overpower him, bite his neck, and snap it clean off. Axe aside, Kong has virtually no response to Goji's atomic breath or having his extremely powerful jaws tighten around his throat, which could throw a 15,000 ton Muto across a block. In conclusion, I do think that Godzilla overall has the advantage in durability, raw power, experience, and aquatic combat while Kong has the advantage in speed, dexterity, and intelligence. Even though Godzilla should have enough advantages to win, I do think that Kong has a legitimate chance due to his tenacity and being able to feed off of his pain and fury. Honestly, I predict that they're gonna do some ass pull and have Kong get amped by absorbing the atomic breath, or he'll get some bullshit power up if the girl he protects gets in danger or something like that. From the looks of the trailer, it is likely that Kong will have to use Godzilla's atomic breath against him by absorbing its power using the axe and hitting him back with it. But what do you guys think? Which titan do you believe will come out on top? Please let me know, and I really hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown as I had a lot of fun working on it. Thanks so much for watching, please subscribe, and I will catch you thoughties next time. Peace out.